Hey everyone, John Roca here with my top five films of 2017. Number five is Coco, directed by Lee Unkrich. This is such a vibrant and colorful film that introduces you to one of the most important and beautiful traditions in the Mexican culture, El Día de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Pixar really bounces back from a couple of their recent efforts to show you that they haven't forgotten how to make animated masterpieces that appeal to all generations and leave you sharing a Costco-sized box of tissues in the theater. And the voiceover work from Anthony Gonzalez, Gail Garcia Bernal, Benjamin Bratt, and Alana Ubach just breathe so much life into these characters. And all the story is something we've seen before, you know, following your dreams against your family's wishes. It's one that's never quite had the same resonance before and beauty and scope. I mean, how many of, of you following your dreams have had to confront your dead relatives to pursue them? And by the time Miguel plays that last song, if you're not broken into little pieces and crying, then I need you to go see a heart specialist to make sure you actually have one. All right, my number four film is Get Out, one of Perry Nemiroff's favorite films of the year. It's directed and written by Jordan Peele. What an incredibly powerful film about race relations in our country and our world that, think, that sinks so much deeper below the surface than we've ever seen in a film before. Now, the cast of Allison Williams, Bradley Whitford, Catherine Keener, Stephen Root, an incredibly funny Laurel Howery, and of course, a great Daniel Kaluuya inhabit this world so forcefully that before you know it, you're drinking the tea yourself and going into your own sunken world where Jordan Peele confronts you with the whispered truths of racism in this country that I never knew someone would be allowed to put into a mainstream film. And hey, it also works as a damn good horror and thriller. So you get two for one there. Now, number three is The Shape of Water, directed by Guillermo del Toro, starring Sally Hawkins, Octavia Spencer, Michael Stuhlbarg, Michael Shannon, Richard Jenkins, and an incredible Doug Jones, who brings the amphibian man to life. Guillermo has directed a masterpiece here on the idea of the poetry that love can be. It's an underwater fairy tale on dry land, and it leaves its effect on you long after you leave the theater. Sally Hawkins once again delivers a masterful performance. She definitely walks a tightrope between Eliza's tender vulnerability and her steel spine of determination to bring this love to life. The colors are so vibrant thanks to Dan Lestusen, and the score from Alexander Desplat is magical and the perfect accompaniment to this story that asks your heart to believe in a beautiful, lyrical fantasy amidst all the steel, dirt, and narrow spaces of life. It's akin to seeing a beautiful rose growing out of the oldest concrete. My number two is Blade Runner 2049, directed by Denis Villeneuve and starring Ryan Gosling, Sylvia Hoax, Anna de Armas, Robin Wright, Jared Leto, and the return of Harrison Ford as Deckard. As a massive fan of the first Blade Runner, I didn't think it was possible to bring this world back to life in the distinct way that Ridley Scott did back in 1982, but Villeneuve does it. And the music from Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Wolfesh immediately puts you back in that world. It expounds on the themes of what it really means to be human that Ridley presented in his first film, and nothing hammers that home more than the powerfully intimate sex scene in the middle of the movie. It's a film that knocks you for a loop and keeps you going. Number one, Logan, directed by James Mangold, Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, and Daphne Keene. It's a film that transcends the superhero genre. It's a Western that explores the toll that, can, that being a hero can take on an already unwilling participant. But it also explores how age can take away all you once relied upon to give you strength and what you have to do now to survive in the world. And the father-daughter relationship between Logan and X-23 is so tender and tough love at the same time. And damn if it doesn't blow a hole in your heart by the time it's done. Well, there you go. Those are my five top films of 2017. Thanks for watching me here on Collider. It's been a joy to be a part of this uh, family this year and getting to watch these films and talk about it with all of you. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.